Okay, the only thing left to do are a few examples. This is section 5.6, example 7 on 247. And if you look at the example, ha ha ha, a star is 4.2 light years from Earth. If one light year is 5.87 times 10 to the 12th miles, how many miles from Earth is the star? So you see right there, let me pull up my last sheet. We did that calculation of 186,000 times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. That number is given to us in this example 7. It's 5.87 times 10 to the 12 miles. So we didn't need that to be given to us. We only needed to know one number, which again is one of those things in the world of science that I just happen to know, speed of light. All those are easy conversions, so I got that number on my own, okay? So we found out in that past example the distance across the entire universe, but now we're talking about a nearby star. And 4.2 light years away is pretty nearby, although you'll see it's nothing close than we can ever dream to get to in our lifetime with the technology we have. We need to go 4.2 light years away, and we know the conversion is 5.87 times 10 to the 12 miles. So we need to take 4.2, um, if we write out the units just for unit practice, light years times 5.87 times 10 to the 12 miles per light year. Okay, what happens? Light years cancel. One in the numerator, one in the denominator, and I just have miles. Okay, now here's a case where we don't have like an exact scientific notation multiplied by scientific notation, so if it makes you feel better, we can call that 4.2 times 10 to the 0, times 5.87 times 10 to the 12th. Okay, we'll multiply our two uh, coefficients, if you will, the, these numbers, not the powers of 10, the coefficients together. We'll call that 24.654 times 10 to the, it's still going to be 10 to the 12th because 0 plus 12 is still a 12. However, we're not in scientific notation anymore, so I need to make that correction. I want to put that decimal there. So it's 2.4654 times 10 to the 1 power, but then times 10 to the 12th power. So it's 2.4654 times 10 to the 13 power uh, year uh, miles away. Okay, the unit only unit left on the on the table was miles. Okay, staggeringly far distance. Okay, from our little perspective here on Earth, it's just no way to get there. Way too far. Okay, it would take light. 4.2 years to get there and light again travels at 186,000 miles in one second. It's staggering how fast it is. Okay, so someday technology will be way different and maybe we'll get to the stars, but uh, the world of uh, Star Wars and Star Trek and all that is uh, simply not even close yet. All right, let's check out another one. Example 8, an angstrom, another small unit in the world of science, okay, an angstrom it's got, it's like an A with a little, with a little circle on top like that. It's defined as an angstrom, it's called. So A-N-G-S-T-R-O-M. It's defined as 1 times 10 to the negative 7th millimeters. Okay, so a very small measurement. Okay, 1 times 10 to the negative 7 millimeters. What is the length in millimeters of 14.2 angstrom? So 14.2 angstrom equals how many millimeters? Well, we have a calculation. We have, there is 1, point, or 1 times 10 to the negative 7th millimeters per angstrom. So if we wrote this as a unit ratio, 1 times 10 to the negative 7 millimeters per 1 angstrom. Okay, that's our conversion. Well, let's multiply that by 14.82 angstrom. Okay, slap a denominator of one under there if that makes us feel better. What happens to angstrom? Gone, gone. All we have to do is multiply 
1.82 times 1 .10 to the times 10 to the negative 7th, okay? And as you see, if, again, if it makes us feel more comfortable to be in scientific notation on both numbers, we can call it that, and we can call that uh, 1.482 times 10 to the 1 power, like that. So I'm going to multiply the two numbers together. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1.482 times 10 to the negative 6 power. When I multiply the negative 7 and the, and the positive 1 together. Okay? What's there, when, I, when I multiply those two powers of 10 together, which means I'm adding a negative 7 and a positive 1 together. What was the only unit left on the table here on the board? Millimeters. Okay? 1.482 times 10 to the negative 6 millimeters. Okay, I ran out of paper with that one, so I'm going to move it and you're not going to see that anymore. Okay? All right. Okay, our final... Uh, not quite our final example, but our, our final practical example. Coulombs, the world of electric charge. We're doing all this cool science stuff. I like it. I'm a scientist by nature, you know. A coulomb, represented by the letter C, unit of electric charge. So one coulomb is equal to 6.28 times 10 to the 18th electrons. It's a lot of those little suckers to make up a coulomb. Okay, one coulomb is 6.28 times 10 to the next time 10 to the positive 18 electrons. The question example nine is asking how many coulombs how many coulombs is 2.512 times 10 to the 21 electrons. Okay. All good? Once again, I have a unit conversion at hand here. I've got 2.512 times 10 to the 21 electrons. And I want to convert it to coulombs. I'm just switching units. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to multiply that by some unit ratio. That's a fraction over 1. Multiply it by some other fraction. I want coulombs on the top and electrons on the bottom. Here's my unit ratio right there. So I want 1 coulomb on the top, 6.28 times 10 to the 18th electrons on the bottom. What happens to electrons? Cancel, cancel. And I'm left with that. What is that? Coulomb's the only unit left on the board, but if I look at the numbers, I'm left with 2.512 times 10 to the 21st, now divided by 6.28 times 10 to the 18th. Again, the, the unit, only unit left on the board is going to be Coulomb's. All right, so we have to do this division. Well, let's divide this coefficient part. Take 2.512 divided by 6.28. We're going to get 0.4. Okay, look at my powers of 10 here. I'm going to subtract these two numbers and I'm going to get 10 to the third power. Okay, again, unit is Coulomb, C. 0 0.4 times 10 to the third. However, that's not scientific notation. Scientific notation wants to have one number and then the decimal point. So I'm going to shift this decimal point one place over. I'm going to call that 4 times 10 to the second power. Coulombs. Okay, how did I do that? If I want to show the steps, that will be 4 times 10 to the negative 1, right? Because that would turn it into 0.4, which is what I had. But I had 10 to the third. So when I put these two powers of 10 together and I add the negative 1 and the positive 3, I get 4 times 10 to the positive 2 power. Okay. Are we good? The only other piece that we're going to do in this section, we're going to skip the very last part of this chapter. 
Okay, and the very last part of this chapter talks about something called engineering units. Okay, engineering notation. That's very similar to scientific notation, but it's just a little different, and I don't want to confuse the two. Okay, so we're sticking with scientific notation. We're going to ignore engineering notation, which starts at the bottom of 249, um, 250 and 251, we can ignore those, but there's one more example in the middle of 249 that I want to make sure we cover. And that's if we take a scientific notation number and raise it to an exponent. Okay, for example, generically presented, which makes it seem really hard. Okay, let me, let me just get my paper ready here. I'm going to take n times 10 to the power of a and then raise it to the power of b. So I got a scientific notation number here with an outer exponent. Well, it's very simply n to the power of b times 10 to the power of ab. All right, let's look at some practical numbers. Part a of example 10. 2 times 10 to the third power, but then we're going to square it. Okay, so everybody in there gets squared. 2 gets squared, and 10 to the third gets squared. Okay? 2 squared is 4. 10 to the third squared, here's where I multiply, and I get 10 to the sixth. So it'll be 4 times 10 to the sixth power. Everybody in there gets squared. That's all there is. Okay? Part B. 4.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, and then we are going to cube it. Everybody gets cubed. Okay, the 4.2 gets cubed. The 10 to the negative fourth gets cubed. 4.2 cubed is 74.088. Ten to the negative fourth cube becomes ten to the negative twelve. Okay. Now here's a case where we need to make a correction because we're no longer in scientific notation. I want to move that decimal to there. So in order for me to move it to there, that's equivalent to me saying seven point four zero eight eight times ten to the one. But then I had a times ten to the negative twelve already, so it's going to be seven point four zero eight eight times 10 to the negative 11. Okay. All good there. And finally, part C. 7.3 times 10 to the negative 2. But then I'm raising it to a power of negative 5. Okay. Now, same rules apply, but we got to stop and think about what we're, what we're telling ourselves here. So this is 7.3 to the negative 5 power times 10. This will be to the positive 10 power. Okay? 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5 power. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's the same thing as saying 1 over 7.3 to the positive 5 power. Okay, remember a negative exponent is just 1 over the same number with a positive exponent. Okay, so we need to take that number, that 7.3 raised to the power of 5, and then we're going to uh, take 1 divided by that number. So if we do it, let me just punch it in my calculator real quick. and it's also in the book, of course, we get a nice little small decimal here, a 0 0.0000. So four leading zeros, and then 4, 8, 2, 3. Okay, the book's got a lot more decimals than my calculator screen has, but I'll just drag them out. Like the book says, we got that really small decimal, but then we have times. 10 to the 10th power tacked on there also, okay? Clearly, this leading number here is not in scientific notation. 
So let's put it in scientific notation. So I want to get the decimal and put it right there. So I want it to be 4.8237600083. And again, at some point, it would make a lot of sense to round that number off. Okay, the book rounded it off there. A lot of decimal points to carry. But what did we do? One, two, three, four. That was five decimal shifts. So that's times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, but then we had times 10 to the positive 10 already. So if we finally put all this together, we're going to get 4.82376-0083 times 10 to the, when I consolidate these powers of 10, I'm going to get a positive 5. Okay. So that is scientific notation, some calculations involving scientific notation. As I mentioned, the last couple examples in this chapter are about something called engineering notation, so we can skip that. All right, so that concludes chapter five. Um, our next exam covers chapters four and five. So between the lectures we had in class and these uh, six videos here that I'm creating number six right now, that's all the lecture material that you're going to need for our next exam. Still working on how that exam is going to kind of happen, but uh, my next video is going to be basically a bunch of practice problems, like a review for the exam, a bunch of just problems to work, and uh, I will work them, okay? So as a good preparation for the exam. Stay tuned. Thank you.